before I start this video, there are a few things I need to say. You can choose to use what I say about locking your bike, but if your bike gets stolen, that's all on you, not me. I just have to throw that out there, because for sure someone would say, I did what you said and my bike got stolen. And I don't want to have that headache. Alright, now we can move on. Let's have a look into the world of locking your bike. Recently, I came across a lock that was broken into, and this got me thinking about locking up my bike if I needed to. The first thing to take in consideration is the lock material. The three best options I found were Max Performance Steel, Titanium, and Hardened Steel. From the research I did, choosing any one of those materials should be good. Now that you have your material chosen, it's time to buy the lock. When you are buying your lock, it's not the time to penny pinch or buy used. Your lock needs to be able to keep your bike safe, so buying a cheap lock is asking for your bike to be stolen. With buying used, you never know how the previous owner has treated your lock. It could be tampered with and you'd never know. This might just be me overthinking, but couldn't someone weaken the lock, install a tracker, come find your bike, and then boom, it's gone. Anyways, always buy new, and remember you get what you pay for. I would recommend not just using a cable lock because those can be easier to break. U-locks e are the most recommended out there, so get one of them. Let's move on to the actual locking of your bike. What you lock your bike to, and how you lock your bike are both two things you need to think about. First we will discuss lock positions. After spending about half an hour looking around for the best position, I have come up with a few answers. I am sure some of you have heard this before, but one of the most highly recommended positions is to lock your bike through the back wheel and in between the frame. Think about this for a second and you will understand why it's such a good position. For those of you who do not see it, you would have to cut the frame to get the back wheel and the lock off. If you can, you want to do your best to try and fill the hole inside of the lock. If the whole lock is filled, it will be harder to get a lock cutting tool inside. Doing that should deter a potential thief. Another tip I found was putting the keyhole of the lock down towards the ground. I do not know the technical reason behind this one, but it makes sense. If you really want to keep your bike secure, use your main lock in the back of the tire and attach a cable to the front wheel. Making your bike more secure to the one next to it will prevent thieves because they'll usually go for the easier option to get in and out faster. What you lock your bike to might be even more important than the lock itself. There are a number of different criteria you should look for when finding an object to lock your bike to. I'm going to point out the obvious, but I'm sure there's going to be someone out there that will not think this through. There is no point to locking your bike to something that can be easily moved. Another thing you should not lock your bike to is a tree. I'm sure some of you think a tree would be a great spot, but a tree could get cut down if someone really wants your bike enough. Make sure whatever you lock your bike to is strong and secured to the ground well. When locking your bike up for a few hours, do not do it near the place you're going in. For example, do not lock your bike outside of a movie theater because a thief will know you'll be occupied for a few hours. But that point I just said doesn't mean lock your bike in the middle of nowhere. A busy, well-lit area is the best place to lock your bike because it's harder for a thief to be stealthy. While I was googling locks, I came across an interview with an ex-bike thief. The main takeaway I got from the interview was do not lock an expensive bike. Thieves will make an effort for more expensive bikes, so simply just do not lock a high-end bike and leave it. Another interesting thing I found in the interview is that some people will pop your tires so you will be away from the bike for longer. The rest of the interview was just common sense things, so I don't need to re-explain them. I have a few more tips before we finish off the video. Check out your local police station and see if they have a bicycle registration program so you can be identified as the owner if your bike gets stolen. I have stickers on all my bikes that prove the bike is mine if it were ever to get stolen. The lock that I have that was broken into can be registered, which means the company will replace the lock if it gets stolen or damaged, so make sure to check out your lock manufacturer's website. Alright, there you have it, some basic mountain bike lock tips. Again, you can choose to use what I say if you want, but if your bike gets stolen, it's not my fault. I hope this video can point some of you in the right direction. Just like I said in the last video, let me know down below in the comments what video type you like better. 
the more entertainment videos like the Lies Mountain Bikers Say one, or the more informative videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe so we can grow to over 1,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching, and see you next week!